Hello everybody and welcome to the Black Bear Ivan Hobby Channel and today we are going to be painting the tower miniature and haycart from the Assassin's Creed Brotherhood of Venice board game. This is going to be the largest miniature that you paint for this game but let's keep calm and hobby on. Venice is a city renowned for amazing architecture and the many towers of Venice play an important role in the city's landscape. They were also a very important part of the Assassin's Creed games and I had a lot of fun finding and scaling these majestic structures. So I was extremely happy that this gorgeous tower miniature was included in the board game and I couldn't help but go all in with the master assassin plan. It is a truly beautiful and imposing piece of terrain that will certainly become the centerpiece of your game board. So to kick things off, let's start with the hay cart. This is a pretty simple model with some nice textures which makes it perfect for contrast paints. I start with a Ravebone undercoat and use Wild Wood which is the standard dark brown wood colour. I want the wood to be a little dark to contrast with the hay which is going to be nice and bright. Once that's done and dry, I will use Nasdrag Yellow for the hay which when used against the Ravebone base gives a quick and nice warm yellow. Now I know I said I wanted it dark but I felt it was a little too dark with the wood so I am bringing up the colour with a dry brush of Steel Legion Dread. After that first highlight, you can see that the overall colour is a little better but let's bring it up a little more with a further highlight to pick out the details and edges and for this, I'm using Ushapti Bone. After a quick dry brush highlight, you could stop here but I wanted to try doing something a little special. I've bought some dry yellow static grass which I wanted to use to simulate the hay. I saw someone do this in the Facebook group and I thought it was a really good idea so I just slap on some PVA glue and apply the static grass liberally. And with that little additional touch of realism, the hay cut is done. Okay now that we are all warmed up, let's get started on the tower itself. When researching a paint scheme for the tower, I came across this image on Google and I think it's quite clear that this model was inspired by this building called the St. Mark's Clock Tower. Taking a closer look, you can see that the distinctive features such as the rooftop bronze features, astronomical clock and facade design are replicated on the mini. So I take this as my reference paint scheme and get started with the bell and the moors. These bits are intended to be bronze fixtures so I decide to mix my bronze and gunmetal paints because I was going for something a little more muted that would not stand out too much from the tower model. For the cross, this appears to be made of a different material so I pick out the same using Balthazar Gold. It's nice to have a little bit of variation in colour now and then. Once that's dry, I give them a coat of strong tone which as you can see really helps to bring out the details in the mini. For a bit of weathering, I wanted to try and paint some verdigris. Verdigris is a green pigment that forms on bronze that is weathered and exposed. The easy way to do this would be to use a specific technical paint such as Nihilac Oxide but I don't have that so instead I mix these blue and green glazes which I bought for a previous project instead. I try it out on my model and I think it's close enough so I go ahead and apply it selectively on areas that would likely tend to be weathered such as the grooves, undersides and crevasses. And with that, the easy parts are done and it's time to move on to the main body of the tower. For the main body, I start with an undercoat of Wraithbone. A distinctive feature of this tower is the stark contrast between the regal blue walls and the alabaster white columns. For the blue areas, I will be using Ultramarine's blue. Remember to give it a good shake to make sure that the pigments are well mixed. With the Ultramarine's blue, we are going to paint the clock face as well as all these little potholes. From the reference picture, there is also a very striking blue wall on the tower and for this we'll be using the same Ultramarines blue. For larger surface like this, I like to start with painting the edges and then pulling the paint towards the inner portions. This helps with controlling the amount of paint and minimizing the chance that the color will bleed out. Of course, you may make a few mistakes here and there but don't worry too much about it as you can always paint over it later. For the door, we could always paint it wood but I wanted to add even more colour and for this I used Pterodon Turquoise. This colour is complementary to the blues and also very pretty. Now the gold detailing on the building is also very distinctive but it will be a pain in the ass to paint all those details by hand. 
So here's where dry brushing comes in to save the day. The idea is to use dry brushing to pick out all the raised detail, leaving the blue showing underneath. This is something that requires a bit of a delicate touch, but it's possible with the right tools and technique. For this, I'm using the Artist Opus Series D dry brush, and with a little bit of Ushap tea bone, I'm able to carefully pick out the raised detail. My plan is to pick it out in a lighter colour first, so that when I go over with a gold, the gold will show much more easily. Using the dry brush like this can be a little counterintuitive as you need to control the amount of paint on the brush. If you're not careful, you might mess up like I did here, and the bone will mix in with the blue, blurring out the detail. Using the same method, I also pick out all the details of the clock face, which are going to be gold as well. I also paint over the ornate clock hand and other details in Ushapti Bone to provide an even base colour for the next step, which would be to use Nasdrag Yellow to turn all these details into gold. Now all I have to do is give this model a nice all over wash with soft Yeah, that, that's not going to be enough, is it? Luckily, I have this tin of Quick Shade which I bought for a previous project. Quick Shade is a product that is originally intended to be used for dipping, and you can see that out of the tin, it's quite dark and sticky and viscous and clearly not suitable for our current project. But I saw online that this can be thinned down using mineral spirits and I'm going to experiment with that today. In a little bottle, I'm going to start by trying maybe 5 part spirits to maybe about 1 part quick shade. I test this on a small part of the model and found it too light so I add a bit more into the mix. With my mixture ready, I prepare to apply the wash. Quick shade is a little bit toxic so do take the necessary measures to protect yourself and also prevent a mess. To apply the quick shade, I get my big boy Citadel scenery brush and slop on the wash liberally all over the model. After one coat, I felt that the wash was a little too light and so I decided to adjust the mixture. Paints do not always behave consistently so it's important to be flexible and adjust if you have to. So I apply a second coat trying to make sure that the wash gets into all the recesses. Once applied, this will be left overnight to dry. Once the wash is dry, you can see that we have gotten some nice shading on the entire model and that we're almost done. All that's left is to bring the colour back up with a mix of bleach, bone and off-white. As this is a large model, I use my large Artist Opus dry brush and slowly work the colour back up, focusing on picking out the edges as well as details. It's important to be patient and do many rounds of dry brushing to gradually blend the colours back up. Once that's done, I focus on cleaning up and adding details and I start with blue tone to try and correct some of the overbrushing that occurred from the previous dry brushing steps. I paint the blue tone into the recesses on some of the more obvious mistakes just to try and generally clean it up a little bit. For the clock face, I noticed that the numerals were also coloured so I wanted to try and see if painting them blue would be good. With a thin brush, I use the blue glaze and just kind of let the paint seep in. After one round with the blue glaze, it looked a bit unnatural to me so I decided to darken it with a bit of dark tone. I paint over the previous blue tone with this dark tone and hope it looks a little bit better. Lastly, I also paint the brass knockers on the door and give the doors an additional strong tone wash to give it a bit more of an earthy tone. And with that, we are finally done with the tower. In the end, I was satisfied with the dry brush details on the blue panels and I didn't go over it again with gold. I think it works. How will you paint yours? Let me know in the comments below. Phew.